The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNM. We kick things off. We kick off a little June trading right now, and we have the markets in positive territory. S&Ps right now up by about 12 points, trading at 5308. You see the action on a daily basis, pushing the highs on a relative basis. You're up there in April. We're up there towards the end of May with a high of 5368 in the futures, and we're just off that price level right now, trading at 5308. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 103 points right now. That's a gain of about six tenths percent we're trading up 104 points as i said 18,694 right now you were at a 19,000 price point quite the resurgence though you put thing on a 15 things on a 15 minute you talk about some action on friday down to 18,241 you get almost all of it back by the end of the day we're higher into the pre-market on the nasdaq 100 as well dow a little bit of a laggard this morning the dow right now negative by 13 points trading at 38 1,782. So much for Dow 40,000. We'll see if we get back there, though. And how about the Russell? Up by one and a quarter percent for the Russell right now. Back above 2,100. We're trading at 2,101. Bitcoin with some weekend action. How about up $2,500, we'll call it. We're back above 70000 70505 right now. Crude, we got some OPEC news this morning for crude. Boy, it's pretty remarkable, the crude story, man. Crude trading at 76.68. You put things on a 15 minute. You push in the lows that we had on Friday, 76.69. The news out there that OPEC is going to keep the cuts to try and boost the price. No bid whatsoever, though, as crude continuing to find a bid across the board. You jump over to gold. Gold up about six dollars this morning, trading at twenty three fifty two. You were up to twenty three eighty at one point on Friday action, just off that price level twenty three fifty two. We were as low as about twenty three thirty five at about three a.m. this morning, and we jump over to notes and bonds. You get the ten year. We're talking about higher price, lower yield right now. The ten year up about ten ticks right now. We're talking about a ten year yield of four point four seven percent. Four point four seven. We take a look at that ten year on a daily basis. And yeah, just been chopping around. You know, we hit the low price of on April 25th. That correlated to a higher yield. You were back down to a price point on May 29th. It was low as a 107 handle, and we're back to a 109 handle at 109.03 on the 10-year. The 30-year right now, <clears throat> excuse me, positive by 22 ticks at 116.24. We jump over the VIX volatility index this morning. Now it's pretty awesome how these channel lines always line up, right? You make a decisive break through not exactly a channel but maybe a lower boundary line and that was at the beginning of may you get to a price of 1152 and then boom where do you trade back up to right back to that same channel line before you reverse we're at a 1313 right now in the vix very little volatility built into this market right now as we just march higher across the board all right why not we'll kick it off with some meme action meme action and uh that doesn't even incorporate the action that we have overnight. So the GameStop, Meme Stocks, AMC, they've all been rocking yet again. That was the action coming into Friday where you pulled back to 2314. You got Roaring Kitty tweeting over the weekend a quarter billion dollar position to put things in context. OK, this is basically a retail trader who is posting quarter billion dollar positions in meme stocks. And that's what's going to happen when the leader of the meme revolution posts a quarter billion dollar position. Um, 210 million was, I think, the number last night. And boy, it's going to be a much bigger number in terms of the value when it opens this morning. Uh, and let's go back to it. There it is. So now Wall Street Journal doesn't even do it justice because he revealed a $116 million stock position. But in the same screen capture that he posted on Twitter. Now, it's interesting. He did not do this on Reddit. He did it on Twitter. And I wonder if that has to do with something to do with the legality of manipulating markets. This is what I was thinking about, right? Because, boy, I mean, it is quite a position to be in where he basically knows 
I mean, imagine, folks, you go in, you buy a bunch of stock, you buy a bunch of options, you release that info Sunday night, and you know that it's going to be a winning position by Monday morning because people are trading off your position. Now, you have the right to tell people your opinions of equities. You have the right to tell people to say, hey, I think this stock's going to go higher. I've bought this position, right? You have the right to reveal that information. If you're doing it in a way to manipulate stocks, that's where it becomes a very fine line. So it is interesting that he put this out, I believe it was on Twitter, X, not on Reddit, okay? Uh, but it's $116 million. Do they have the screenshot in here? I'll find it on, on the CNBC article. Do they have it here? Yeah, this is, the, this is the screenshot. A GME YOLO update, okay? And yeah, so he has 5 million shares of common stock, which right now it's trading at 40 bucks. So that position alone is at 200 million. But then what's he have on options here? He's got how many? 120 $20 calls, which was valued at 66 million as of last night. Is that right? 65 million as of last night. He's got 30 million in cash almost. So yeah, what is the position? 180, $180 million position is what he had with about 30 million in cash sitting there. That position is going to blow up in the positive on this morning. I mean, the the calls alone are $20 calls. He's going to have $20 of intrinsic value when this thing is open at 40. Pretty remarkable, nonetheless. So you have GameStop rocking this morning. And that's the first time he revealed his position. This all started when he just posted, right? Now you jump over to AMC. There's the action on AMC. And AMC is probably saying, hey, why, why don't we have any AMC action? Well, GME, GameStop, they're the original meme stock. And, you know, AMC, the board over there, they did a great job, man. They were ready to pump out shares to the public. They did it. Well, they raised like $900 million or something like that. AMC spiked all the way to 1330. You're at 529 this morning. You closed Friday at about $4.20. Um, going to be interesting to track this one, man. But yeah, not nothing to joke about. Now, this has not been confirmed, but I would believe it's probably true because if it's not true, then he really opens his, himself up to manipulation. And I would believe that those are probably accurate positions. And why wouldn't they be accurate positions when he knows that the equity is going to do what it did overnight? You spike from $23 as of Friday. You made it all the way up on GameStop shares up to $47.50, which is just bonkers, man. Uh, we made it on the recent run up in the middle of May to 64.83. So we're at about 47, $40 is where this thing is trading at overnight right now. The daily doesn't incorporate that. Let's see if we back it up. Yeah, there it is. That backs up. All right, you got to $80 pre-market one of those days. So this run might have just began, man. We'll see what happens on the open. It's going to be an interesting one. But yeah, I mean, his equity position alone is at $200 million. And then on top of it, he's got 120,000, excuse me, not 120, 120,000. So you got to multiply that times 100. So what is that? That's 12 million shares. Yeah, that's 12 million shares that he's going to have. Man, that's approaching like a half billion dollar position in GameStop. Half billion dollar. Well, that'll move some markets and it's moving it this morning. All right, folks, stay tuned. I'm coming back for the next segment. We're going to have Jacob Jr. joining us at 930 as well. We've got a lot to talk about. Monday action. We'll take a look at some crude oil when we get back. Don't go away. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. This portion of the morning market kickoff is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. We got markets in positive territory. Dow slightly in the red. The meme stops. stocks are rocking it again. And we got crude this morning. So you're negative by 45 pennies. Interesting. On the heels of, we get OPEC. Headline out there, agreeing to extend production cuts and a bid to boost oil prices. Deal signals oil prices will remain elevated through the U.S. presidential election. Well, not so much yet, man. You'd actually dip 50 pennies so far this morning. We'll see if things play out the way that they think they may. OPEC agreed on Sunday to extend all production curbs into next year, a deal that likely signals oil prices are going to remain elevated through the presidential election coming up in, my goodness, five months, bonkers. The agreement comes on the same day. Uh, the group's kingpin, Saudi Arabia, launched a giant sale of shares. Now, that's the next article we're going to look at, okay? Saudi Arabia kicking off. $12 billion. That's a stake of about six tenths percent, raising 11 to $12 billion is what they're going to be doing as you get the government over there pushing out shares of their company. So you have OPEC and its allies considered OPEC plus agreeing to keep collective curbs through next year. The group has long-standing official reductions of 3.66 million barrels a day. The new deal includes the United Arab Emirates securing another upgrade to its official production quota by 300,000 barrels a day. The UAE's new official quota will be gradually phased in starting in January and stand at 3.519 barrels a day by September 2025. Eight top producers in the group also agreed to continue voluntary cuts separately into 2025, currently around 2.2 million barrels a day is the number out there. So, you know, we go forward, that's the deal. You got cuts in place. You have Saudis raising money, selling a stake of two thirds percent of Saudi Aramco. 
Yeah, raising about 11 to $12 billion is that number. And then it's interesting, the other thing you have going on here, and it was pretty interesting on in, in the journal, you had three big stories. Let me see if I can find it, because in, in all together, and I think it might have been on the business page, let's see. I mean, it was just a, a plethora of crude action, all of it potentially hinting to where prices should be rising higher. Uh, nonetheless, you have ConocoPhillips. They are the third largest producer in the headline here. And again, this is May 30th, okay? And when is May 30th? Was that Friday? Thursday, okay? Big oil companies will just keep getting bigger. ConocoPhillips, the latest to bulk up as they are buying Marathon Oil. So what do you got? You got the third biggest producer by market value. They're agreeing to buy Marathon Oil for $22.5 billion. You have Saudi Aramco pushing out paper to the public at this price, and you have cuts continuing that are potentially going to raise the price of oil. Uh, quite a plethora as we look forward. The last part I wanted to jump over on this one, one of my friends had shared this with me. This is just an Instagram um, threads post, folks. Take it for what it's worth. But nonetheless, it's talking about Swift payments, okay? Now, Swift is how basically international banks transfer money, okay? It's owned by the banks. It's the Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecom, okay? Telecommunication, Swift. It's a cooperative established in 1973, and it's owned by the banks and other member firms, and SWIFT provides the main messaging network through which international payments are initiated. It also sells software and services, um, mostly for its use in its proprietary SWIFT network. And yeah, so the point here is all this talk about the dollar going to garbage and conspiracy and bricks taking over everything. This is what is getting used for payments through SWIFT, folks, and it's dollars, and they're at the highest level in a decade, and you're almost at one out of every two transactions in dollar terms using the U.S. dollar. 48% of global payments, the highest level in over a decade, and how about that euro, man, taking a dive? 22% is the number out there. You got, what is that? Others at 12%, the pound at about 7 the yen at 3 and uh, and yeah, you go down from there. Nonetheless, that's going to impact things as well. When you talk about the dollar, you jump over to DXY this morning. DXY sitting at about 104. You're down about 11 pennies off of the 106 price point. Rates persisting higher, keeping a bid in that dollar index at 104.62. But back to crude, okay? I'm going to give you quite a bear scenario. And what's so interesting here is I'm like a bear on crude and I'm a bull on gold. And in theory, they both trade off the dollar. Right. Let's jump over to the end this morning as well. As you get the end sitting at basically that 156 to 157 price point, man, the yen. Talk about weakness, putting a bid in the dollar for sure. But you jump back to crude. I mean, boy, if you ever get. And it looks like this is heading back to $70. OK, so cut through all the riffraff of cuts of Saudi Aramco out there, etc. It looks like this is heading back. Very difficult for crude to find a bid basically over the last two months. Okay, since April 5th, we've traded from 86 down to 76. Barely have found a bid. Every time we've gotten a bid, you could have sold that bid. We're now at the lowest price point we've been at since going back to February. We're at $76.38. We are now below, oh, not quite, I guess. 76.15 was May 24th. Did we get back a little there? No, we made it to 76.38 with uh, at the low. So the low May 24th was 76.15. But nonetheless, we're right at these lows. And it looks like we're heading back to $70. But boy, if you ever break through that $70, you're going to 60, man. That is the next price point. You're going to 60. Let's back this up on a weekly. And yeah, we haven't seen 60 at all. But where 60 would come from is your A points 95, your B points 70. You trade up to a 618 of that move which puts you at about 85 and then yeah you got a 25 dollar a to b leg 25 bucks off about 85 is going to bring you to 60 bucks and i think we're coming into that 70 dollar range in crude which defies logic right now i know it does but don't be surprised if the market defies a little bit of log logic and on the flip side of that you jump over to gold i mean boy gold priced in dollars remarkably strong 
if we ever get any weakness across the board in that dollar index, and not saying we did, but if we do, then watch out to the upside on gold, man. 23.55, you've just been chopping around these highs basically since April 5th in the same way for the gold contract this morning. Pretty remarkable. Other news out there. You got NVIDIA and AMD coming out with new chips. How about it, man? NVIDIA, there's a pop for you. 11.32, the highs of last week are at 11.58. And you jump over to AMD shares. AMD gets a pop. You were at 166.90. You're at 170.45. And yeah, pretty remarkable. Just a couple months after. We'll talk about this when we come back from the break. We're going to be joined by our man Jacob Shoup as well. But yeah, how about it, man? The video, only two or three months after they came out with their last chips, they got new chips. They're going to be coming down the line. They haven't even sold the Blackwell chips yet. They got them in production. And the new ones, I believe they're called Rumen. We'll talk about those, but the race is on, man. NVIDIA shares, you're opening higher. And we'll see where the meme stocks open as GameStop. Looking at about a $40 open. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back after the break for the market open. Tiger. You've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Tommy, how are you doing? Good morning, Jacob. Happy Monday, man. How are you? Happy Monday. It's good to join you. I was listening a little bit to the show earlier. Um, you're talking about crude oil a bit. Of course, we had these OPEC, uh, the OPEC kind of paper come out, and I guess they're extending the output cuts. But looking at crude oil right now, it doesn't seem too bothered by it. It's still at 76.16. That's one way to put it, right? It is interesting that even in the headlines I was reading from the journal, um, the sub-headline there, 
is that the quote unquote, and I'm just reading it right off the journal, man, the deal signals oil prices will remain elevated through the presidential election. It's like, well, we trade lower even on, on that. Yeah. It's pretty <laughs> remarkable that, you know, to, to guarantee what's going to happen five months out totally. through a presidential election, um, I wouldn't say that they, they are guaranteed to do just about anything just yet. We'll see. But it, it is interesting that it was a little bit of a surprise, I guess. Um, and, and yeah, you know, crude trading at 76 bucks. And as I pulled up on that chart, man, very difficult to find a bid over the last two months, really, for crude when you have a lot of things lining up for it. And we trade even lower in the last few minutes. We're dipping towards a 75 handle, man. We're yeah. at 76. Look at it. And we just got below. I was talking about coming into that break. Not sure if you heard me. The low from May 24th was 76.15. And we did just get below it. We traded to 76.11. So we're at the lowest level in crude that we have traded at. Since let's see, we're backing it up to I think February at this point, which is remarkable. Yeah, we're all the way back to where we were February 26 right now, in the price of crude after trading all the way up to 88 dollars, mm -hmm. and I think that 70 bucks might be the next stop. I mean, it is interesting when you look at the dollar, and then crude, and then gold, and how they're all gonna trade because they're all obviously correlated to a certain degree. But yeah, nonetheless, man, crude 76 bucks. You can't argue with the price of the pump that we're all paying right now. I mean, it is pretty remarkable, right, that inflation is through the roof. And meanwhile, I mean, we got, you know, I, I get gas at Sam's, Jacob, so I save yeah. a few extra bucks at Sam's. Um, but I think the price was $3.20 yesterday at Sam's for a gallon of crude, which when you look at the inflation spectrum of everything up 20, 30, 40 percent over the last <laughs> four or five years, if you put that on like a, you know, a, a 2018 dollar terms or something like that, you know, it would probably be back to 280, 270. I just always think about that relationship as well. So pretty interesting. Big time. Yeah, super fascinating. Yeah, I think if the pumps outside of that is about like 350. So okay, coming yeah, into summer. Oh yeah. yeah, I was saying coming into summer as well. It's it's surprising yeah. that there's not, you know, uh, an expected increase in travel. I guess inflation is kind of laboring that a little bit. I know we're gonna have a hot yeah. summer, so energy of course goes up. Oh. You've had some natural gas. You know, natural gas has gone up uh, somewhat as well. Uh, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting to see, I think, how this plays out. Because 76 and holding there, um, yeah, you know, even with a 3.6 million cut is, uh, is pretty impressive. Hey, so what do you think about Roaring Kitty and his, like, yeah. half a billion dollar position at this point probably on the open, man? I can't even do that type of 175 million bet. And that was as of Friday's close, and you make a $175 million bet, and you have a huge option position in there, and the stock gets up 64% in the next day. Um, yeah, he's dealing with quite quite some numbers, man, to, to put it here. Let's, let's, let's pull up and see what that option is yeah. that he's dealing with. Because he's got 120,000 of the – what's the exact call here? He's got – $20 calls on June 21st, <laughs> and let's just pull up here. The 21st, I wonder what, I wonder what, uh, and look at, I gotta, I wonder what the volume is, and this is where, you know, the $20 calls, let's see, have they even opened yet? Something's weird, is this, is this equity? Oh, maybe it's halted. I don't know, because I got a mm -hmm. bid ass that's bonkers right now, but nonetheless, I mean, you're gonna have almost $20 of intrinsic value, and you got 12 million shares potentially, you're out there, so that's $240 million, at least on the option position, and then he's got, I mean, you're talking about a half billion dollar position, man, Yeah. and then you got five million shares yeah, so he's got, I mean, just push, pushing it off $40, which is simple math, and I think it is halted right now because it's stuck at 38 bucks probably. Um, you're almost at a half billion dollars. I mean, just just wild stuff going on, man. Um, and we'll see where it plays out. But, yeah, and you got AMC up as well, and that is halted for whatever reason. AMC's up 18%. They get back some of that game. Yeah. Hey, how about the, the chip stocks? Let's jump to them because they have real-world implications, and you got NVIDIA up another 4 percent to 1140 bucks and uh what are they pushing right now let me let me pull this up 1138 right now in the video pretty wild man and then amd and as well new, so yeah and they both have new chips which i found so interesting <clears throat> yes so nvidia comes out with their next generation which is rubin and they already have their Blackwall chips which they just announced a couple months ago now these rubin chips the headline out here from yahoo 
the next generation Ruben AI platform for 2026. Man, we just came into May of 2020, excuse me, June 2024, because the Blackwell chips are going to be for 2025. And I guess these next generation platform in development called Ruben potentially going to be 2026. And I have to say to myself, man, at what point does the market price in all the growth that's possible on these equities? And, you know, I think I saw somewhere that somebody put them, I think it's Bank of America, put them as their top pick with like a price tag of 36% above where you're even at right now. Wow. But yeah, NVIDIA comes out and then you got AMD, the headline there, new AI chips amid the intensifying competition. Um, yeah, not surprising, I guess. But nonetheless, they announced new AI chips at their Computex <laughs> Tech Conference in Taipei, Taiwan. Um and yeah, this may be a little yeah. uh, some good insight for us going forward. And what I mean by that is one of my big arguments is like how frequently can these large companies buy these new chips, right? These are going to be sold at obviously yeah. a pretty vast premium. Now, of course, we're still in such a nascent stage that there's no doubt these Blackwell chips are going to be purchased and the Rubens even going into 2026. But if yeah. we see any indication of a minor slowdown from Blackwell purchasing to Rubin and then to whatever they're going to come up with next, because no doubt they will come up for something for 2027 and 28. Sure. That can give us a little bit of an insight to into, into where we can see a slowdown in this sector in a major way. Um, and then AMD, of course, is running that's the MI 325 X accelerator. This is this whole thing is super fascinating. Let me see if I have an AMD on Monday detailed its data center chip roadmap. It's the Instinct MI325X accelerator. This is just the MI300, but a little bit better. And uh, that's going to be available in the fourth quarter. So we, we might see some movements in AMD in a major way as well. And it is pretty wild. Just jumping into the chart on a five-minute basis, you have NVIDIA actually trades higher off the open after being higher. So they're up now 4.3%, but AMD actually dips up only 1.2%. Yeah. So it's like you can't keep up with NVIDIA right now, man, no matter what you do, um, no matter what kind of multiple you're priced at, you can't keep up with NVIDIA, man. $2.8 trillion equity right now. And you're trading at 11.40, just off the all-time highs of 11.58 last week. And I think I was listening to your show. I think it might have been Friday because I heard you having that discussion. It's a great point, man, talking about, you know, what if there's a potential slowdown. And we've seen it a bit. We saw it with Zuckerberg with his meta endeavors, right? They were spending Boku bucks. The stock took a dive to the basement. They had to curtail some of that. They laid off people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there is definitely a possibility, man, that, you know, these companies aren't bringing in the revenue yet that's associated with that type of capital spending. Right. At some point, those have to square. Now, listen, this is the future. It's 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 much more important than the metaverse is to somebody like Zuckerberg. You know, it is. It's a different deal in terms of the implications, the productivity, right, and all that stuff. But it is interesting. If you do see any type of a slowdown, man, some of these equities will get severely punished get really for spending bad. so much money on capital with very little to show for it as of yet. Oh, financial we're going future. to break, I guess. We'll be right TFNN back. TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, 
taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. All right, welcome back, Tommy. What welcome else are we back. looking at today? We have, you know, GSK went down quite a bit. Um, you can get now some testimony on one of their Zantic lawsuits, uh, which is pretty big for the company. Um, obviously, we were back up today after the open. This was published before the market opened. That kind of dipped down a lot, and it came right back up to it. Uh, but we'll see kind of where that shakes out with it. Obviously, Paramount mergers, Spotify is increasing the uh, subscription. Of course, inflation isn't missing anything at all, and uh, that's jumping quite a bit. And then Japan, uh, obviously, with Toyota had some major kind of scandal going on right now yeah i saw that as well man yeah um stopping production or delivery of some degree right for toyota i saw those headlines out there um yeah pretty interesting and how about mexico's got a new president first female president out there from mexico there we go um in some type of landslide election and then always interesting you know you got the southern border our one of our you know allies to a degree and interesting it just when you look at to bring things back not the yen i'm pulling up the uh i just had the here we go the mexican oh come on don't do this with me claudia scheinbaum yeah and that's interesting too that because up. i know obrador the last president he was he tended to be very um I, I don't want to say protectionist because he, he wasn't but it was very much sure. like he's not going to lean into these larger countries and kind yeah. of bend to what they want, right? Obviously, he decreased output uh, for oil as well, which Mexico doesn't make up a big uh, percentage of the output of OPEC plus, but still it's something, you know? So it'll be interesting to see yeah. uh, what Scheinbaum does here. And check out the US dollar peso, as in quite a spike to weakness to 1772 from 17. That's a 15 minute chart. And of course, there's gonna be some reverberations. You get a new election, you get a little bit of a landslide. Um, and it was expected, so this isn't a shock to a certain degree. But yeah, quite a spike on a daily basis. So they got something happening over there. We'll see how it plays out. But a new president and then first female in Mexico, and we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, and as you said, you know, I was reading a couple articles today, and uh, yeah, Claudia Scheinbaum, first female president, landslide win, gives the ruling power ruling party the power to push through constitutional changes such as an overhaul of election agency so they're going to have a bunch of power here because yeah um you know she won by almost 59 percent out there and i believe she's got some of the congress yeah um yeah so we'll see what happens nonetheless uh interesting yeah you know i haven't read too much about her but you know having this kind of ease of trade and and really and agreed upon, you know, a, a approach to world trade with with our neighbors, Canada and Mexico is, is really important for what we do here in America. So it'd be interesting yeah. to see if she's a little bit more agreeable, um, you know, with, with with Washington than Obrador was in a major way. Yeah, I know Obrador as well in some capacity. I think this was earlier on in his uh, incumbency, but 
which is warming up to China in some capacity as well. Uh, I don't yeah. know how that sh fared out the the rest of his presidency, but still, I know that was uh, actually one of the one of the key points when he when he had won. So, be interesting to see what happens with that for sure. And I just pulled up GameStop because I can't help myself to but watch the casino in action. And uh, we paused at $38 briefly, and we're already down to 31 So I wonder <laughs> if Roaring Kitty is out there taking some money off the table. You know, it is interesting. Those options he had only go out to June 21st. Yeah. So, you know, you're only talking about two and a half weeks, the end of, you know, three weeks, I guess, if you count today. But not exactly super long term. And, you know, geez, what are you waiting for when you buy options and you get a 70% acceleration, right? I mean, maybe he's taking the money. Who knows? Always interesting. Totally. Nonetheless, back to 31 bucks this morning, yeah. Another thing with, with GameStop as well, and you were right, it was briefly halted, and now we're moving again. But when when this first you know kind of rally in it came, I mean, this is even a few years ago, a lot of people got stuck in it, right? I mean, they, they bought <laughs> it super high levels. For some reason, there was this idea that this was never going to go back down. Right. This is this was during COVID <laughs> yeah. era and people had a lot of time on their hands. So they bought a Robinhood account threw a few hundred bucks in it. Or in the case of GameStop and, and honestly, some cryptos as well. A lot of people threw money in. They get locked into these, you know, just kind of not great companies. I mean, GameStop, there's a reason GameStop is getting short squeezed the way it is, that it's at these lower levels that it has been historically. Uh, is, and is that they're struggling. Their, their main bread and butter business is completely gone with the digitization. Yeah of everything it really right um yeah, at this point i don't understand how yeah. they exist really right yeah. i don't understand this either but they they are in some capacity and so you know you get this massive rally that you had a few years ago that made this this stock famous and all the big boys get out of it because they realize like, this is silly and you still have these kind of um i mean they're almost ideologues for it right i, I always tell this yeah. story but i remember being on reddit on wall street bets and i was like all right what's everyone's kind of exit strategy on this you know i was just curious and uh i was met with a lot of vitriol for that i was gonna say how hard did you get flamed how long it did it take you to get flamed was Talking so about bad an and it was where are your diamond hands Jacob? It was where are those instant. diamond hands and i remember sitting there looking i'm like are, are we serious here and you <laughs> yeah. know in in a way this could be some of that as well obviously this is massive yeah. volume so you know there's some big boy moving it but but definitely um you know, if, I did find it interesting. I'm not sure if you heard me at the beginning where he put this out on whether it's Twitter or X or Reddit. Uh, no, not Reddit. He did not put it out on Reddit. And I found myself asking whether that had to do with some of the legality of potentially talking about stock manipulation mm. versus just putting out your own information on whether it was X or threads or wherever he posted that. Because it was interesting that he chose not to post it onto Reddit. And I wonder if because you have to start. I mean. I hope, and I would imagine he is, consulting yes. lawyers before <laughs> making these types of posts that are going to move the market and make him hundreds of millions of dollars in, in the course of a day. And, you know, the bummer is, is that he's probably making it off the retail traders themselves, right? Who's, who's the yeah. one that he's selling into to get out of that position like you talked Absolutely. about? Absolutely. You know, who is the one that he's going to be selling to? He's probably going to be selling to other retail traders. And so it's interesting that he decided to make that on X versus making it on Reddit, which is where that thing caught fire initially. And I wonder if that was um, at the advice of counsel saying, listen, when you're teaming up with Reddit, they might be able to get you for a little bit of manip manipulation versus if you're just stating your positions out on a public platform like Twitter, it's going to be a lot more difficult for them to allege manipulation. I don't know. Sure. I, I no, that's a good. I, I, I think it plays into it yeah that's but he's gonna be selling point. at some point because he's got it because those options expire in less than three weeks <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah i you know i i think too that's a really important point especially to say the people who are listening who maybe aren't super active in trading or just getting into it in recent times you know it, this is kind of like the musk method in a way as well where i've seen you know elon musk use dogecoin really as like a personal coffer in a sense and again sure. the idea is like doge is going to mars it blows up and he sells into it, right? And then he gets hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, this is the same same concept. <laughs> Nothing is happening in GameStop that is fundamentally moving Material, this stock right. up. It's not yeah. correct, right? Right. Yeah. And that's yeah. a major issue. And there's no short squeeze this time either. So you're not having a margin call and people needing to buy and and, and press up the price of the stock. So, you know, yeah, you're, I think you're 100 percent right that he's selling into to retailers. So. 
Let's talk a little bit of tests when we get back. How Absolutely. About Looking forward to it. Folks, we'll All be right. right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Flawless analysis, Tommy. How are you doing, buddy? Can you hear me? <laughs> you say hi. Say hi, everybody. What's going hi. on, pal? Hey, hey buddy. Yeah. Did you say hi? Yeah, I say hi. What are we looking at? Are we looking we're, at some stocks? We're looking at some stocks. Look, there you are. You see it? He's not wrong. We're looking at stocks. What do you want to look at? You want to look at Disney? What do you think Disney. about Disney, Tommy? Try to ignore this stock. Oh, man. I want something Should've that sold. you got. Tell me what you got. What do you got here? Who's that? McQueen. McQueen. Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about Disney, Tommy. I don't know if you can hear me. It's McQueen. No, it's that's McQueen. McQueen. Yes, huh. you're so right. So we had to bring him on. I can't hear him. I know. We got to get multiple headsets in here. You want to talk to him? All right, we'll let you talk to him to the end of the show. Tell him we got McQueen. We got McQueen. And who else do we like to watch? Do we like to watch Spidey? We like to watch Spidey. Oh, Spidey's the best, huh? <laughs> we like to watch Spidey. Yeah. 
I'm Spidey Man. You like brands. to watch Spidey. Disney's got some good brands, but they are not capitalizing them on them just yet. That. But nonetheless, we'll see if they can get it done. I uh, want you to play on the speakers. And we're, and we're back on below the speakers. that mm -hmm. breakout okay, level. Let me see if I can put it on the speakers. Yeah, I had to bring them in here. We've been playing. I'm going to put them on the speakers here. We've been playing all weekend. There, there's our speakers, okay? Oh, you hear you? There you are. You hear yourself now? And uh, he wanted to jump on the show with Daddy, and so we had to get it done, Jacob. I hear know? it, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Disney's a great point. I mean, you know, we broke below that that breakout point, right, of about so February 7th, We're February 8th. We're going to wrap up the show. We're going to wrap up the show? <laughs> what, what do you got planned for the day, Tommy? Huh? Playing with some McQueen, huh? Tomorrow. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm going to sit here and cry about my Disney position. It looks like we're going to test the lows again of that breakout area. But we need some volume to get through it. I, you're, and you're 100% right. It is amazing how we can move up to this 123 and then just give it right back. Uh, Disney has some Crazy, issues man. going on. So, Jacob, um, thanks yeah. so much. I appreciate it, man. Thanks you for having me on, Tommy. Folks, thanks so much. Guys, take care. I'll be with you, you today at 3 a.m. 3 p.m. <laughs> See you later.